Hey guys, what's going on? Quick preface, my dog will be joining us in this video as you'll hear him panting. Right there. Anyways, let's get into the content. So before we dive into the content, let's uh, quickly go over so what we've done so far. What we've done so far is we've talked about an easy application of Feynman diagrams. We've come a long point and we've come a long ways to a point where we're now, we should now should be at least somewhat a little bit comfortable understanding what Feynman diagrams are and being able to use them on a very rudimentary level. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply Feynman diagrams to interaction Lagrangians, specifically for Yuaka um, or Yukawa interactions. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Now let's get into the content. So we are going over uh, Feynman diagrams for Yukawa interactions. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this apart into two videos. One video is going to be look, setting up the problem and the zeroth order approximation. The next video, uh, which again is going to be on Monday, is going to be um, the first order approximation and the second order approximation. So let's get right into the topic. So we are... This is our Lagrangian, right? So I'll get my pointer out. Again, my apologies for the panting in the background. I've told you already that my dog's in here with me. So we are going over this Lagrangian. Now he's leaving. Um, anyways, we're going over this Lagrangian. This is the real, so this is a real scalar field right here, right? So this is what we, we've seen this before. We've seen this where we have the kinetic term and a potential term for our real scalar field. I'll, I'll write that down, just so we can remember a few things. So kinetic and potential term for our real scalar field. And then we have our complex scalar field. So this is our um, kinetic part. And this is our potential part. for our complex scalar field. This is a scalar field. We're not looking at uh, spinners yet, which is a little bit confusing because the book has these symbols for spinners also. Uh, but we're looking at scalar fields. If this was a spinner field, then we would uh, have a term in here, um, a gamma term. Uh, that gamma term applies to, um, or is a matrix. Uh, but that's not in here. So we're specifically looking at complex scalar fields um, in this case and um, and a real scalar field here. And then we have our Yukawa interaction, right? So we have our all the things that are interacting with each other at some uh, with some coupling constant. So we're kind of setting up the problem here. Uh, if you recall, uh, we have for a complex scalar field, we need to have its complex form. So that's this bar. And uh, we have this mass term for our real scalar field. And uh, yeah, so that is so this is our Lagrangian that we're going to be working with. We specifically want to look at this interaction term, though. So let's go down. If we go down to the sketch, so let's set up the scattering amplitude. The scattering amplitude looks like this. So we're having two particles. It doesn't really matter what their names are for right now. Just call them two particles. Uh, go, uh, they interact at some point, and uh, as a product of the interaction, we get two uh, end state particles. So initial state and final state. All right. So let's draw that out. Initial state and a final state. All right, and then we have this guy right here, right? So this is our initial state. So I'll write this out too. So initial state, and this is our final state. And we have, then this is our a scattering amplitude, right? 
this is what's going to give us our scattering. This is a scattering operator or a time evolution operator. Right, so we time evolve our initial state into a final state. So what is the time evolution operator? Well, if we remember from the Dyson series, uh, that we need the interaction Hamiltonian for this. And so um, here's our interaction Hamiltonian in general form. We'll take a look at what this actually has to be later on. What we're going to find out is it's part of the Lagrangian, right? That sort of makes, should make at least some sense, perhaps not intuitive sense, not, nothing about quantum field theory is intuitive. Uh, but at least this sort of hints at this is this sort of hints at why we need to set up our Lagrangian also, right? So our Lagrangian is integrally in, integrally integrally related to our Hamiltonian here, and so what we're doing is okay. So here's our final state again. Our final state particles. Nothing changed here. We're really just putting in our this right here for our um, for our scattering amplitude or for our time evolution operator, right? Because, and because we found last time that our time evolution operator was, it had to obey the Schrodinger equation. Um, and so in order to do that, it had, and, and it also had to behave uh, within the confines of the Taylor series. And because of the, both of those constraints, we were, we need, we had an, we had a form that ended up looking like this, right? Where we had to, um, we had a time order, or we had to, we had a time order Hamiltonian, and uh, this is the second approxim This is the second part of the approximation in the Taylor approximation. Right, so I'll I'll actually write this out. We want to remember all this stuff. We we always want to come back to the. We always want to bring this stuff to the forefront of our minds when we do this, just to stay constantly stay fresh. And when uh, sort of I believe when you do this. When you're constantly put, bringing this stuff to the forefront of your mind, you're putting it deeper and deeper into your, uh, your memory bank, right? So at some point, you can just write it down, understand what it means, and then move on. Anyways, uh, so this part here was a first Taylor series approximation. So first Taylor series... And then this guy right here, I'll do this in a different color. This guy right here is our second Taylor series. Okay. And um, anything after that is uh, higher order approximations in our Taylor series. Um, and then we have uh, our initial state, so that didn't change. Okay, and then we had we time uh, the time evolve uh, the time evolve in the normal order, right? So I talked about so the, I think I accidentally called this a time time of or time um, uh, time ordering. This is actually the normal ordering. This is the time ordering part. Um, okay, so we now take the operator out and we have this guy uh, we split up our Taylor series we so we can do this so our first one here is this guy that's here right so I'll highlight that in blue so this guy here is our first Taylor series approximation and then this guy here is our second approximation. All right, so we really set this up. We haven't even invoked the Lagrangian yet. So not even by invoking Lagrangian yet, keeping these, um, keeping these, these interaction Hamiltonians uh, like this in this form, this is a general statement for all Lagrangians, right? The, um, until we specify Lagrangian, then we put that into our Hamiltonian. Okay, so we're setting up the problem still. We just want to write down some important contractions now. So we have this guy, or these two guys, right? So we're contracting a field at one point with the same field at, the, at a different point. Same thing here. These are just the field associated with the real um, 
the, the real scalar field and then the field associated with the complex scalar field. Then we have all these guys here, right? So um, we have complex, so we have real, complex, and then the conjugate, the complex. Same thing here, real, uh, complex, conjugate of the complex. And we're contracting all those with states, with an initial states here and with final states here. And we get all these. So you can actually do the calculations like we've done in, in different videos uh, where you come out with these answers. And then last but not least, we want to contract initial with initial states and final states. Right? So we have these guys here. The difference between this guy and this guy, again, this is, um, these are just different types of particles. What we're going to find out is that we, that this doesn't really, we don't really need this guy. The, the, the book kind of just puts it in there, and I'm putting it in here to, for the sake of completion. But uh, we're going to use these two guys. Okay. Uh, and anyways, um, the, these are the answers you get. So again, you can go through the calculations. We've done this calculation before. And um, this is what they come out to be, right? These are um, the, these are the terms that are, or these terms here are a consequence of norm, uh, normalization. And this term here, um, again, this is we see this everywhere. We see how we we've seen before how this comes about. Uh, this also is a, a term that helps us with our Fourier analysis. And these are the delta functions again that come from Fourier analysis. Okay. And when I say Fourier analysis, you know, I, I mean that um, the, the Fourier mathematics is really essentially is at the core, or is at the core of quantum field theory, right? So we haven't really gone over a course in Fourier analysis, which I would love to do. Uh, I kind of just stipulated at the forefront a couple or a while ago that um, these the. the for Fourier analysis is something that we just need to take for granted in um, in quantum field theory. And I've sort of said, you know, the Fourier analysis is, uh, if we just trust the mathematicians uh, that this is true, then uh, we'll proceed from there. Um, again, I would like to go over a playlist in Fourier analysis uh, but you guys have spoken so far, and I've uh, on the on the on the recent poll, and it looks like group theory with an emphasis on Lie groups is going to be the next project. Uh, but the Fourier analysis is at the forefront of my mind, and so with that being said, let's do our our zeroth order approximation. So our zeroth order approximation is not too bad. Uh, so here it is. So we're just taking this guy. Uh, where is it? This guy right here. This is our zeroth order approximation. Again, this comes from a Taylor series of our interaction Hamiltonian uh, having to obey the Schrodinger equation, the rules of the Schrodinger equation. So, okay, so we have our time order part. Remember, our time order part is our normal order part plus all the contractions. Right? And we demand that the normal order part goes to zero. Uh, we've seen why this is the case before. And this is also goes to zero because um, uh, we've seen contractions of two initial states just go to zero. Right? So the only things that don't go to zero are contractions of initial with final states. Right? So these two guys right here. So what does this turn out to be? Well, so our f this guy right here is right here. And this guy right here is this one right here. And I think everything, all the ones and threes should be right. I believe I went over this multiple times. Uh, but anyways, that's, so that's all of this. So the delta function is going to be zero unless these two are equal. So if we set them equal, then that means these two guys, that reduces one of these guys, right? So and so I put k1 here. Okay, so this is, turns into a K1. Same thing goes for this guy and these two guys here. So what we get is this guy right in here. And what, so these multiply to each other, give this. 
these multiply to each other give this one these ones um, right here and these ones right here okay and then it's smooth sailing from there right because two times two is four two times two is four okay and we have two of them right so four plus four is eight we have k uh, omega k1 omega k1 are similar between the two terms right uh, omega k2 and omega k2 are similar so we foil those guys out these guys are also foiled out right so these two guys are the same thing right the same thing uh, so, and since we have uh, four here and four here we add those up we get eight so this is our answer, right? So this is actually the same thing as our phi four Lagrangian of our zeroth order. Um, so nothing has really changed for the zeroth order approximation, which is kind of interesting, but it's also not that it's also not terribly enlightening because again the, the zeroth order approximation is the approximation in which the two particles don't interact at all. Right? So we would perhaps expect these answers to be the same. Uh, if the two particles here don't interact, two particles here interact, we should be able to recover the same calculation that describes no interaction, right? And that's this guy right here. And we've got this, I think, three times now in our calculation. We use it once with Wick's, uh, with using Wick's theorem. We used it a second time uh, with Fourier, or well, not with Fourier, but with Feynman diagrams. And now we're using it here uh, with Feynman diagrams again, but applied to an interaction term. And since there's no interaction in um, the in our in in the zeroth order approximation, this should be the same, right? So zero interactions is the same calculation across the board. And so what's going to be interesting are the first and second order approximations. And so. With that being said, I hope you guys like this content, and we're going to go over the first and second order approximations in the next video. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys in the next one.